You're watching the CHSAA on News 12 Varsity. Welcome to Rose Hill Gym on the campus of Fordham University for the CHSAA Intersectional AA Championship. The New York number five seed is Cardinal Hayes, taking on the top seed out of Brooklyn, Queens, Archbishop Malloy in a tri-state top 20 matchup. Hello everyone and welcome to Championship Sunday. Both these teams won their regular season division and while Archbishop Malloy marched on to the Brooklyn Queens title, Cardinal Hayes as the top seed was eliminated in the opening round of its playoff bracket. Typically in playoff games, in championship matchups, it's unsung heroes that make the biggest impact. For Cardinal Hayes, Terry Dawkins scored 18 points in a semifinal win over Bishop Lachlan, and the Cardinals hope the junior can once again replicate that performance about six points better than his season average. As for Malloy, Khalid Moore scored the game-winning free throw with .6 seconds left to edge Stepanak by one. He plays on the wing, and he typically guards the best perimeter player on the opposition. History will be made here at Fordham. Malloy hasn't won a title since 1987. As for Cardinal Hayes, their drought dates back to 1990. Malloy, Cardinal Hayes on News 12 Varsity for the AA Intersectional title. Who will rise higher? Dunk harder. And go farther. The playoffs are here. Tune to News 12 Varsity all postseason long. And we welcome you back to a packed Rose Hill gym on the campus of Fordham University. Thomas Schnarr is our producer, John Malone providing us broadcast assistance, and I'm David Resnick. So pleased to bring you the CHSAA AA Intersectional Final featuring Malloy and Cardinal Hayes. The Cardinals are the five seed out of New York. They are 20 and eight on the year and check in at number 14 in our Tri-State Top 20. Their head coach is Joe Lodes in his ninth season, recently picked up career win number 200. He was a freshman at St. Francis Prep the last time the Cardinals won a double A championship. Let's introduce you to the starting five for the Cardinals. It includes Tyrese Williams, the 11th best scorer in the CHSAA. He's averaging better than 15 and a half points per game. As for Malloy, 27 and one. Brooklyn Queens Borough champs, and they are six in our Tri-State Top 20. Michael McCleary, his fourth season out of Brooklyn Tech, and the starting lineup for the Stanners includes Cole Anthony, 20 points per game on the season, 25 points in the semifinals. So Malloy looking to win a regular season, a Brooklyn Queens diocesan, and an intersectional title. We are underway in the AA championship. Stanners in the white, Cardinals in the wine and gold. Foul called by Billy Sacco, the head referee for today, joined by Sean Morgan and Steve Salustio. It was called against Joe Toussaint. Tallest player for Cardinal Hayes that plays is around 6'2", 6'3". And so they're gonna show a lot of different looks against the 7'1", Moses Brown. This is Moore on the bounce. Finding Brown, who is 11 of 14 from the field, good for 24 points in the semifinals. He's denied there, and the Cardinals want to play at a high pace. Nothing doing there on the break. Mark Jackson missing the early parts of the season. Limited this year. 
This is Tyrese Williams and now Dawkins who had the game high or team high 18 rather last time out. Cardinal Hayes hit 10 three-pointers in their win over Lachlan but rimming in and out there for Dawkins. Herring stripped. Here comes Tyrese Williams, two on two. Supported on the wing for the jumper off the mark from Jonte Williams. Still scoreless, 90 seconds deep. Cole Anthony looks to fix that, gets his own miss, and he's wrapped up on the floor. The foul here against Tyrese Williams, second on the team, as Malloy and Cardinal Hayes getting off to a slow start here on this collegiate floor of Fordham out of the A-10. This is a championship that dates back to 1928, 89th year of the CHSAA championship. Dumped inside and Williams thought he had a clean block of Brown who shakes off the contact and is going to the line. Second personal foul against Tyrese Williams, the leading scorer for Cardinal Hayes, and that will summon Terrence Reeves off the bench early here in the first quarter. Moses Brown scores the game's first point. Averaging a double-double this season at 20 and 10, a seven foot one junior who is one of the best in the class of 2018. One of two from the floor, Vertucci is turned aside as Mark Jackson gets the swat. It'll stay with the Stanners. Inside, easy look, John Herring cuts to the basket for the game's first field goal. 3-0 Malloy to start. The numbers you see next to the name, Tri-State rankings. Pull up, falls in. Jonte Williams puts Cardinal Hayes on the board. Archbishop Malloy, number one out of Brooklyn, Queens. Cardinal Hayes, because of their quarterfinal loss in the Archdiocesan Championship, the number five seed and an offensive foul called against Malloy. First one charged against the team, it's picked up by Moses Brown. Jackson Vertucci picks up the foul. Toussaint into the paint, and that's Dawkins. Terry Dawkins scored 18 points. His season average 12 and change. And a 4-3 lead for Cardinal Hayes. They've scored the last four straight. Inside to Brown. Just too much on the block. And that's going to be something to really watch for. Cardinal Hayes without a natural matchup or big man to contend with Brown. So they're going to have to hit from the outside. Joe Toussaint, the 5'11 sophomore, ring it up from deep. And 7-5 Cardinals. Jackson Vertucci has the answer. It's a three from the corner. First meeting of the season between these two teams. For Malloy, one of the only teams that they did not play out of the New York division. Plenty of crossover games between the two, but not every team plays everyone in the league. So a some intrigue as Brown takes a dribble, a, flat, a foul on the floor as reaching in there was Jackson. So typically over the years with the matchups with Lachlan and Samarian, 
Christ the King, all the years that they won, you'd get to this intersectional bracket and it would be the second, third, or sometimes even fourth meeting in the semifinals or championship game of the season between the two teams. But here, it's a fresh matchup against regular season division winners. Jonte Williams on Anthony, who pump fakes and leaves it short. Anthony wanted a foul that did not come, and now Williams, who was guarding him, leaks out and nearly throws it away. Past the midway point of the opening quarter. Slim lead for the Stanners. And as Toussaint tried to pass it in, he stepped on the sideline for a violation. Malloy last won a championship in 1987. Their last final was in 2000. They lost to St. Ray's, led by North Carolina state-bound Julius Hodge. Brown inside, no. Tapped out by Herring, and it's controlled here by Reeves. He came off the bench early after two quick fouls committed by Tyrese Williams. And so now the junior will run the show. Three twenty remaining. Here's Reeves penetrating inside. Blocked. Brown. 12 to shoot. That's a deep three that rattles in for John Tay Williams. The junior with five points, half of the Cardinal Hayes output, and the Cardinals lead by, by two. Cole Anthony is yet to score. A lot of times we've seen him look to facilitate early before taking over. He launches a three that's short. High rebound for Jackson. And good job by Malloy to get back in transition. Half court offense here for the Cardinals, up by a deuce. Anthony with the steal. There was contact as Malloy looks for a foul. It's just out of bounds. We haven't even played six minutes. There have already been six lead changes as the advantage seesaws here in the first quarter. Dawkins falling away is short. Khalid Moore tracks down the rebound and brings it up the floor where he commits the offensive foul. Reeves stood in his way and Moore picks up his first foul. Foul totals aren't so impressive in this first quarter, but of the four team fouls against the Cardinals, two of them against Williams, who went to the bench early here in this first quarter. Toussaint crossover on the kick out to Reeves. Weak side rebound down to Brown inside of two minutes to play first quarter. Jade C has come into the game, passing it away. Toussaint transition off the back of the iron twice, and Brown reaching up for the board. Pull up, in and out. C no good. Herring was underneath for Malloy, but couldn't grip it. Approaching the one minute mark in the first quarter. Toussaint creating separation for Dawkins. Two point lead for Cardinal Hayes. Both teams have gone cold over the last couple of minutes. Driving inside, count it, plus the foul. Mark Jackson is heading to the line with a chance to complete the three point play 
after Moses Brown picks up his second foul. Jackson Vertucci has to come back in for Malloy as Jackson completes the three-point play. 13-8 is the lead for Cardinal Hayes. Largest advantage either way in the first quarter, and now Moses Brown has to sit. Jackson Vertucci rebounds the air ball. Moore dumped inside and another offensive foul. Khalid Moore just picked up his second foul. Correction, Jade C picks up the foul. 22, not two. And with no disrespect, to Jade, that's a huge difference, especially because that would have been more second. Six second differential between game and shot clock. Approaching 20 seconds to go on the first. Reeves, pull up. Off the iron, no. Tapped by Herring to Moore. Here comes Anthony in transition. Got bumped as it was slapped out of his hands out of bounds. Herring driving in. Held ball. one way to avoid calling a foul. Tyrese Williams with two fouls re-enters. Under six seconds to go. Comes in for this offensive possession. Jonte Williams charging up the floor, slicing through the D, and his last second shot is off target. Good start for Cardinal Hayes. 13-8 the lead over Malloy vying for their first double-A title in 27 years. We dive deeper into the Cardinals' double-A history when we return on News 12 Varsity. On March 11th, starting at 5 p.m., watch the best of New Jersey high school basketball battle for the right to be called champions, live on Channel 14. At the buzzer, good! This doubleheader begins at 5 p.m. with the non-public B finals, followed by the non-public A finals at 7 p.m. Watch the best of New Jersey high school basketball live on the big screen on Optimum Channel, Channel 14. We welcome you back to Fordham University and Rose Hill Gymnasium as Cardinal Hayes has a five-point lead. For Cardinal Hayes, in total, they have four city championships. Two in AA, 1944, and then 1990 on a team led by MVP Jamal Mashburn. And then they won a couple of A titles in 2001 and 2007 under legendary head coach Tom Murray. Anthony to Herring to open up scoring here in the second quarter. Tom Murray coached 40 seasons, nearly 600 wins, those three New York City titles. And Joe Lodes coached three seasons as an assistant under Murray and then took over. Now it is ninth season. Dawkins slithers to the basket, answers the layup right back to increase the lead to five. Cole Anthony still scoreless. More crossover and a reach-in foul. Foul called on Dawkins, his first. Shooting in the first quarter, not good for either side. Five of 14, 36% for Hayes. 27% on three of 11 shooting for Malloy. Williams picks off the pass. Up ahead to Jonte Williams. 
He scores the layup in transition, 17-10. Fertucci steps into a three off the front of the iron with top spin and through. He's got a pair of three-pointers, just a four-point game. Hayes wants quick hitters. Here's Anthony quickly up the floor and rising to the rim is Khalid Moore. Transition from Malloy. Hayes attacking the other way. Offensive foul. Anthony facilitating and taking the charge on the other end as Mark Jackson picks up his second. Had a wonderful opportunity to speak with Cole Anthony after the victory over Lachland at CTK for the Diocesan Championship. And he said, my teammates knew how much I wanted it and they raised their game. He plays with such a quiet confidence and poise. Never seems to be rattled out there as he leads the way with both his scoring and facilitating. Amazing to think he's only just a sophomore. One and one for Anthony, scoring his first point at the 624 mark of the second quarter. Joe Toussaint just picked up his second foul on the hit on Anthony. Five oh run here for Malloy. A seven oh run make it. And you see there the gentleman on the right holding the basketball. Well, his name is Billy Sacco. And after 38 years as a referee, he's officiating in his last game. He believes this is his eighth AA championship game. He says that he's tired of somebody else other than his wife yelling at him. These coaches are tough. Billy Sacco, nearly four decades, and maybe his most defining moment, as highlighted in Sports Illustrated. He was one of the officials the lead official as he's been so many years of his career that said the Khalil Edney shot of New Rochelle against Mount Vernon back in 2013 for the Section 1 championship was good and he was part of the profile in Sports Illustrated along with one of our colleagues Kevin Devaney Jr. amongst others and so it's not the CHSAA but something that Billy is known for and we wish him best as he transitions into retirement. Tyrese Williams drains a three, his first points to break a tie. And for Williams, back on the floor with two fouls, Joe Lodes taking a gamble here in the second quarter. Fertucci already with two, left that triple short. Tracked down there by Jonte Williams, and Anthony has the interception. Anthony eyes the basket, too strong, a bit awkward off glass. Transition the other way, Toussaint led to the basket and a hard foul by Moore. Now that is the second foul against Moore. Incorrectly said in the first quarter that he had two. Here's Joe Toussaint. 13th best scorer in the CHSAA, earning him second team all league honors. Earning that distinction along with Tyrese Williams. Perfect at the strike. Cardinal Hayes with five straight after Malloy scored seven in a row to tie the game. Anthony forced into a tough shot. Herring the rebound. Moore takes a dribble. 
but travels beforehand. Inside of five minutes to play until halftime. Cardinal Hayes leading by as many as seven points. They've had multiple leads of five. Dawkins in the post, out to Williams. Floater off the rim and out. Dawkins the rebound inside. Another offensive rebound and he sticks it back. Terry Dawkins going to work on the offensive glass. He's got six after 18 in the semifinals. Moses Brown sitting with two fouls has completely opened up the door for offensive rebounds. Seven point lead. Cardinal Hayes on a 7-0 run. Beautiful feed inside. Bertucci to Herring for the two-handed slam. There's dunkers in every position. It's unbelievable. Usually you just got big men or forwards, and now you've got these wing players that can sky to the rim. Catch and shoot, off target for three. Williams no good as Anthony pushing Herring. Euro step for two. Cardinal Hayes is the team that wants to get out and run. Instead, Malloy is utilizing transition. Anthony with just two points, but already six rebounds, four assists. Herring again, no good. Tied up with Anthony behind the play. Numbers for Cardinal Hayes, and a transition three for John Tay Williams. Part of a 10-point first quarter for Williams. Anthony deep, off the iron twice. Inside positioning for Williams in the rebound. Here's Hayes on the move. Jackson lost it on the way up. Anthony bumped. He's going to the line to shoot free throws. Cole Anthony shooting one and one. Perfect three of three from the line, his only point so far today. As Moses Brown is checked back in, in a five point game. He picked up his second foul with 102 remaining in the first and has sat for more than six minutes. Cole Anthony on his way to a triple-double type afternoon. Williams driving in, challenges Brown and scores over the top. Good job by Moses to stay straight up. Would have been an easy target for his third foul. C, ring it up. Jade C is really the only Significant contributor off the bench for Malloy as they go six deep. Three point game. Dawkins denied once. He follows for eight first half points. 6 2 Junior has lived on the offensive glass. Sharif Conti gets called for the foul away from the ball. And so this is Moses Brown at the line shooting one and one with the ninth team foul against the Cardinals. 
Moses Brown, as he has shown throughout this season on his way to earning first team all league, he is much more than just a 7-1 dunker. He has shown great feet and a good touch from the free throw line as well as he makes one of two to make it a four point game. Ten on the timer. Here's Toussaint, uses the high screen. A jumper over Brown, no. Offensive rebound, a beautiful shovel from Conti to Dawkins for the easy lay-in. Herring with the left hands. So as Moore and Anthony have combined for just six, Herring has 10, Fertucci has six, and they're getting scoring from other places outside of their two first teamers. Toussaint again using the high screen from Conti. Here's Conti from the elbow good. Sharif Conti, the 6'3 senior. Along with Jackson, the only two 12th graders part of the main rotation. This is the spot Cole Anthony started his drive in the semifinals where he missed, and Malloy got to the line. Four seconds to go, kick out C, it is short. Battle for the rebound, claimed by Williams, and can't do anything with it before the conclusion of the first half. What a start for Cardinal Hayes. 35-29, the lead over Malloy. A battle of regular season division champs. And Joe Lodes looking to win his first AA title as head coach of the Cardinals in good position at the break. Cardinal Hayes by six. It is halftime at Fordham University on News 12 Varsity. On March 12th, starting at 11 a.m., watch the best of Long Island High School basketball battle for the right to be called champions. Live on Channel 14. This doubleheader begins at 11 a.m. with the Class A Finals, followed by the Class AA Finals at 1.30 p.m. Watch the best of Long Island High School basketball live on the big screen on Optimum Channel, Channel 14. Welcome back to a jammed Rose Hill Gymnasium on the campus of Fordham University. We earlier talked about the Cardinal Hayes Championship history as for Malloy. Six titles, all in double A, dating back to 1958, where a head coach by the name of Lou Carnesecca led the Stanners. And then, of course, five titles for the legendary Jack Curran, the most recent back-to-back -back in 86, 87. The MVP of those years, Kenny Anderson, who scored 23 points in that 87 title game. Another player on those back-to-back -back championship squads was Ralph James who is a key contributor to those teams. And it was Ralph James prior to today's contact, contest that addressed the Stanners in the locker room. You know, we spoke earlier how Joe Lode took over for a legendary Tom Murray, and well, Michael McCleary has a very similar story where he took over for the legendary Jack Curran, who won 972 games in 55 years as the head coach. And so, both these current head coaches know what it's like to replace somebody of great stature and of great success. Waiting for the start here of the third quarter. Thomas Schnard's our producer, John Malone providing us broadcast assistance, and I'm David Resnick. Cardinal Hayes begins the second half leading by six. Terry Dawkins and Jonte Williams each with 10 points, and we'll roll through for our live audience. 
some of the team halftime stats. Catch and shoot Williams for three. Game high 13 for the junior. Big time performance for Jonte. Cole Anthony with just four free throws in the first half. He's got to get going offensively. Herring, no. Brown after it, mistiming his jump as it comes off the rim to Jackson. Another three, good! Tyrese Williams, largest lead of the afternoon for Cardinal Hayes, and Malloy calls for timeout. 12 point lead for Cardinal Hayes, doubling up their halftime advantage. Their largest lead previously was seven. And now Malloy down 41 29. Opening minute of the third quarter. Cardinal Hayes fueled by the disappointment of that opening round loss to All Hollows by a point after winning the Archdiocese Championship in 14 and 16. Took down Holy Cross, Mount St. Michael, and Lachlan. Three wins by a total of 19 points with two of them Sands their victory over their arch rival, Mount St. Michael, close ones. Joe Toussaint picking up his third foul. That's a development here in the third. But if Cardinal Hayes continues to shoot from the outside like they've done in the opening minute of the third, the fouls won't matter. Intercepted by Toussaint. Nobody picks him up. The trailer is Dawkins, flips it up quickly. Brown taps it to himself. It's nearly flipped in as Brown took his eye off of it and Jackson made contact. Khalid Moore, who has a cut over his eye from the Stepanak game in the semifinals, knocked down. And because time was called on his behalf, Jade C is checking in. Moore seems to be okay as he'll take a breather exiting the game here early in the third quarter. Out of the reach of Anthony, he tracks it down. Tyrese Williams on him. Herring has been Malloy's leading scorer, but he's stripped by Williams. This is John Tay Williams, or excuse me, Toussaint. Jackson off the back of the iron, no. C on the pull up, off the iron, no. Kept alive and taken away, now poked free. Malloy has it for Tucci, look away pass. He airmails it out of the reach of Brown. Unforced error there by the Stanners. With 21 wins this season, picking up the third 20 plus win seasons in the four years under Michael McCleary and the team's trading turnovers. Just underway in the third quarter. Separation created by Cardinal Hayes. Scoring the first six points of the third. Williams stepped on the sideline. Sean Morgan was right on it. No surprise that the officiating has been stellar in this type of game.
Now just a question of whether the shot clock should be reset, determined that the Cardinals had gained full possession. And so it's back here to the Stanners after a pair of turnovers. Khalid Moore back into the game. Anthony around the defender, gets to the rack. Count it, plus one, as he scores with the off hands. Cole Anthony's first field goal. But look at the way in which he's contributed. Seven rebounds and five assists to this point, and now seven points. Three-point play for the Stanners. First three points of this third quarter, and the deficit is 11. Make it nine, I beg your pardon. As they say, those poor in math head into broadcasting. Ten seconds on the timer. Toussaint driving in, kick out Williams. It is short, contested well by Moore on the closeout. Offensive rebound, Toussaint tracked it down. Anthony switches back to the point guard, Toussaint. Jonte Williams comes for it. Tyrese Williams wants to set a screen. Extra pass to Son. Open for three. Whips out. Loose ball foul. There was a battle for the rebound. Cole Anthony gets called for it. Anthony contests. Doesn't get him anywhere. Reach in and a call. Jade C. As Tyrese Williams elevated for the shot. Williams makes the free throw. They were in the A-City Championship and lost to Stepanak back in 2010. Tim Philp, the current assistant coach for Joe Lodes, was the head coach of the Crusaders. Those two having a moment before the game. Said so the last time we were here, we were on opposite sidelines. Anthony misses a three. Toussaint able to drive in. Kick out Williams. In and out. Brown the rebound, and he was pushed. There's Philp on the end there. Joe Loads in a crouch, welcoming Mark Jackson back to the sideline. Ten point game. Brown battling for position inside. Stanners can't get him the ball. Now it's Anthony driving in, plus one. Anthony makes the basket, but immediately goes to his big man and says, either words of encouragement or something at the very least to keep him engaged, wanting to make sure Brown continues to fight for position and call for the ball. So both production in points and leadership all in one trip as Cole Anthony has two three-point plays in this third quarter alone. And Malloy is on a 6-1 run. That's a travel against Williams. Cardinal Hayes hit four of nine three-point field goals in the first half. We've seen open looks in the third quarter, but they haven't gone down. 
Seven point game, momentum building for Malloy. Inside to Brown, triple teamed and a held ball. So Malloy consciously wants to get the ball inside to their impressive 7-1 center. But the Cardinals are just swarming the big man with a plethora of guards. No disrespect there. They just don't have a big body inside. Sharif Conti on the floor is 6-3. Primary defender inside. A bullet to Brown. Too easy if they could just get him the ball. Five point game. Eight of the last nine scored by Malloy. Toussaint for three, good falling down. Joe Lodge calls for time. Joe Toussaint drills a three, stabilizing the game. Eight points in the Cardinals' favor. Cole Anthony, who's percolating here in the third quarter, is the son of that man, Greg Anthony, in attendance. Greg Anthony was joined by Kenny Smith at the semifinals at St. John's. Kenny Smith addressed the Stanners after those semifinal wins. Smith played at Malloy for Jack Curran, and I believe was in town to promote the upcoming NCAA tournament. Greg Anthony here, the former nba -er, former star at UNLV watches Jade C knock down a three. Back to a five point game. Our producer Thomas Schnars always scanning the crowd. If you're here, he'll find you. Pull up, Toussaint, short. More in transition. Herring keeps it alive. The intensity starting to increase in front of this packed crowd. Williams driving in against Brown. Pretty finish. Tyrese Williams high off the glass and through. Back to a seven point Cardinal Hayes lead. Reach in foul on the perimeter. into Brown, turns towards the basket and misses. Rushed it. A chance for Cardinal Hayes to add to a seven point lead. Both teams playing mostly starters. Toussaint really sold the bump by Moore. That's the third foul against Khalid. Deflected, it'll stay with the Cardinals. Again, Billy Sacco with the ball in the corner. Eighth championship game, the official calling it quits after a nearly four decade career as one of the best officials in the area. What a way to go out for him. Williams pull up, no. Brown reaches high and he was tugged at. Quiet game relatively for Moses Brown. Six points, six rebounds. Malloy trailing by seven, and Brown dealing with that early foul trouble. 
Gets positioning inside for the easy dump and the foul. Cole Anthony making it happen inside as Brown's flush closes the gap to five. Cole Anthony, sixth assist, as Brown has eight points now. And our colleagues back on Long Island are, are cutting up plays for our wonderful in-game highlights. And typically, when there's a dunk, that's a play that you immediately mark right away. Let's see that again. But Brown dunks with such regularity that you almost have to choose which ones to show again. Four-point game. Malloy showing some token full-court pressure as Toussaint has to at least think about it as he jogs across the timeline. Half minute to go in the third. Six-point game at the break. Cardinal Hayes took a 12-point lead in this quarter, and they have the ability to go up by six or seven after this possession. Five second difference between game and shot clock. Toussaint with seven. Dawkins! First point to the third quarter, and a foul with five seconds to go. Already the seventh team foul against Cardinal Hayes. A delay before the ball is reinserted. Like a pitcher and a catcher meeting at the mound, Billy Sacco will barely let us into the conversation. It appears that it was a foul before the ball was inbound, so not a common foul to put Malloy at the line. Anthony surging to the rim with .7 seconds left in the third. Anthony has the opportunity for his third three-point play of the quarter. Whoa. Held without a field goal in the first half. Cole Anthony now with 12. And Father Greg must be pleased. 13 overall, .7, just a catch and shoot. Can't take a dribble, would not count anyway. And it's just a three-point game here at the end of the third quarter. A 17-8 run for Malloy after falling behind by 12, which sets up a terrific fourth quarter in the intersectional CHSAA AA final on News 12 Varsity. Who will rise higher, dunk harder, and go farther? The playoffs are here. Tune to News 12 Varsity all postseason long. Malloy's last title back in 1987. Cardinal Hayes' last title back in 1990. Which team is ending a streak in eight minutes? Welcome back to Fordham University, Rose Hill Gymnasium. Final quarter of the CHSAA intersectional double-A final. Tom Schnarr's our producer. Backdoor look and the block by Herring. I'm David Resnick, John Malone providing us broadcast assistance. Malloy has led for just two minutes and 40 seconds of the first 24 minutes of play. Ball movement, Dawkins, short. Offensive rebound to Sant, and Brown is hacked. Eighth team foul against Cardinal Hayes, so Malloy will shoot for the remaining 729. Just three fouls against Malloy.
Moses Brown at the line. Made his last free throw to complete a three-point play. Front end of a one-and-one one is good, closing the gap to just two. Front end and in. Perfect trip, one-point game. Nineteen to eight run for Malloy. Anthony throws his hand up. He'll agree with that one. It's a veteran move. If you're going to complain about one, admit to another. Dawkins on the bounce into Brown. Beautiful defense. A chance to take the lead. Here's Anthony, pull up, short. Crowd was ready to explode as the Stanners faithful rose to their feet with the ball arcing towards the basket. Toussaint, too strong. C, out of the reach of Moore. The crowd living and dying by every play in this one possession contest. Cardinal Hayes made it to the intersectional semifinal in 12, 13, and 14. Again this year, but finally breaking through to the championship game. Since moving up to double A in 2012. Kickball, nine seconds on the timer will reset to 15. First double-A final since winning it all back in 1990 behind a Kentucky bound, Jamal Mashburn. Again, Joe Lodes, a freshman at St. Francis Prep back when that happened. Dawkins across the paint, Jackson spinning, Brown there again, can play more aggressively now that we're into the fourth quarter and he has just two fouls. Brown for the lead! Moses Brown slams it through on the feed from Jade C and Malloy's first lead since the first quarter. Dawkins denied. Brown on both ends. Here comes Anthony. Out of control. Moore takes a tumble, trying to retreat back. Williams tees it up. Tyrese Williams knocks down a three-pointer, and here we go. Lead back to Cardinal Hayes by two. Timeout, Cardinals. The inside play of Malloy, Moses Brown. The outside shooting of Cardinal Hayes, Tyrese Williams, those two in foul trouble in the first quarter, their impacts neutralized, and now here in the fourth, really showing what their capabilities are. Five and change to go in the double A title game. Two point difference in Cardinal Hayes' favor. Moore got stuck, Herring off the bounce. We are tied. Herring had 10 points in the first half. First field goal of the second half. We're deadlocked at 52. Anthony picks up his third. Fifth team foul against the Stanners who spent a lot of time in the lead up to this game talking about the history of the program, invoking the name of coach Jack Curran, who this week will have passed away four years ago. Williams in the corner, wants two. Off the iron, no. 
Anthony has the rebound. Ninth rebound to go along with 13 points. Out of bounds to Cardinal Hayes. Beg your pardon, Cole Anthony with 10 rebounds. He's got 13 and 10. Moses Brown with 13 and 9. Anthony also has seven assists, closing in on a triple double in this championship game. He has played every second of this contest. Joe Toussaint up for the challenge. Off the iron and through. Joe Toussaint, the sophomore. A lot of growth this season for Joe Lodes, earning himself second team all CHSAA. Crossover Anthony, leans in, tough shot. Three and a half to go. No significant foul trouble for either side, playing at full strength. Williams gets around Moore, who pokes it free. Malloy has the chance to reclaim the lead here in the fourth. It's Anthony, perfect. 17 points overall. The floater, no good. Brown the rebound, claiming the Toussaint miss. But Malloy turns it over in the backcourt. Extra possession here for the Cardinals inside of three minutes to play. Offensive. Toussaint using the off arm to create separation. That is the fourth against Toussaint. We don't have the capability, but just think about this game with and without Brown on the floor. A lot of the change in momentum has to do with his presence or lack thereof. Anthony can't make it six in a row. Up ahead, Williams. To the rim, no. The follow for the senior, Jackson. Tied up at 56. Timeout, Malloy using one of their final four timeouts remaining in a tie game with 2.22 remaining in the fourth. 56 all. Moore driving to the basket out of the timeout. Offensive rebound, Brown gets it back, throws it up one more time and converts. He breaks the third tie of this fourth quarter. Malloy by two, which matches their largest second half lead. Double-double for Brown. Anthony nearly picked it off. Inside of the foul line for Jackson, getting the friendly roll. The 6-3 senior with his second field goal of the fourth. We're tied for the fourth time in this quarter. Tied at 52, 54, 56, and now square at 58. Inside, Herring goes to the left hand, no. A chance for the Cardinals to take the lead after Tyrese Williams clears the rebounds. They can take this clock down to inside of a minute if they want to. Joe Toussaint. Now Mark Jackson gets Brown away from the basket. Drives in, count it, plus one. Mark Jackson, a tremendous finish on the move. Cardinal Hayes by two. Joe Lodes calls time. 61 seconds to go. Cardinal Hayes looking to take down Malloy and join its football program who beat Stepanak 
to win both the football and basketball championships in the highest level. It has not been done since Joe Lodes' alma mater, St. Francis Prep, did it in 1957, 60 long years ago. Game reset for you, 61 seconds to go. Hayes with one timeout left, no fouls to give. While Malloy has three timeouts left and no fouls to give as well. Big free throw here for Mark Jackson. Got it. 10 points overall, seven in the fourth. It's a three point game. Cardinal Hayes has the lead. Anthony takes the high screen. Moore to see. Short. Battle for the rebound. Brown has it. Never hit the rim. Shot clock is at 13. Anthony bypasses on the screen. Step back for three. Forces it up off the rim. Brown has it and nearly had a chance at a three-point play. Just needed a little more strength to get it over the heel of the rim. That was close. That was really close. Shot clock is off. Moses Brown shooting two in a three-point game. Malloy with timeouts to spare. Cardinal Hayes has one. Brown makes both. Malloy calls for a 30 second timeout. Shot clock is off with 29 seconds to go as Malloy is finishing up a timeout. Stanners can't play straight up. They've got a foul, but they do have some time to first go for a steal. They will not guard the inbounder, Dawkins, with Moses Brown back on the other side of the floor. Everybody else man to man. It's into Williams, Vertucci tugging at the jersey, wants a foul to be called. It finally is by Billy Sacco. And so the seventh team foul against Malloy, Tyrese Williams, the leading scorer for the Cardinals, stepping up for a one and one. His sophomore season ended last year with a broken fibula. Now as a junior, has a chance to make it a three-point game. First free throw good. Even with the make, still just a one possession game. Molloy to get the ball back with two timeouts. No good, just a two-point game. Anthony up the floor, 20 seconds to go. Anthony stripped, Toussaint took it away, racing the other way, and he got fouled. Joe Toussaint shooting two. Fifth team foul, or excuse me, fifth personal against Khalid Moore. The junior is done with 14.9 seconds to go. A tremendous steal by Joe Toussaint, the sophomore, and he stands in solitude on the line thinking about the opportunity he has. Two free throws don't end it, but it makes it difficult for Malloy. Toussaint gets two, fouled in the act of shooting. Pure. Joe Lodes will burn his final timeout. Full timeout, Cardinal Hayes. Out of stoppages with 14 seconds to go. 
We see so many of the former stars of the CHSAA keep a close connection to their alma maters. We know how Kenny Smith and Kenny Anderson feel about Malloy. You have to wonder what Jamal Mashburn and the members of the 1990 Cardinal Hayes Championship team is thinking right about now. Joe Toussaint has already made one. Second free throw up coming to make it a two possession game. Toussaint calmly makes both. Four point lead for Hayes. Anthony picks it up just shy of the timeline. Needs to hurry. Cole Anthony driving in. Layup no good. Brown on the follow and an immediate timeout with 7.5 seconds on the clock. Two-point game late in the fourth quarter. If you don't get a steal, you have to foul immediately. Fertucci with the grab prior to the ball being inbounded. So no opportunity for the steal. Ninth team foul. It's one and one. Jonte Williams shooting one and one. No good. Six seconds to go, two point game. Anthony drives in. Anthony to the rim is short. No call, it's over. Cardinal Hayes survives. The Cardinals are CHSAA double A champs. 64 62, first title in 27 years. And Cardinal Hayes outlasts Malloy. Cole Anthony. Driving the entire way in a two-point game. Had a decent look at the rim, and his layup was short. Absolute euphoria on the Cardinal Hayes side. First title since 1990. Joe Lodes, an emotional head coach. 64-62, an absolute classic to end a drought regardless of the winner. And Cardinal Hayes making enough plays and enough free throws down the stretch to win by two. 64-62, Cardinal Hayes. Disappointment in the Archdiocese tournament. They come all the way as the five seed at the New York division to win a double A title. On March 11th, starting at 5 p.m., watch the best of New Jersey high school basketball battle for the right to be called champions live on Channel 14. At the buzzer, good! This doubleheader begins at 5 p.m. with the non-public B finals, followed by the non-public A finals at 7 p.m. Watch the best of New Jersey high school basketball live on the big screen on Optimum Channel, Channel 14. Celebration very much underway for Cardinal Hayes after a 64-62 win over Malloy. Joined by senior Mark Jackson, who had the go-ahead bucket, the three-point play to create the separation. You're racing down the floor. What a finish it was. What's going through your mind as you're attacking the rim? Um, the biggest thing was, like, don't get blocked by the seven-footer. And then once I got past that, it was just kind of finished at the rim. So I knew once I got past him, it was going to be pretty easy as soon as I got to the rim. So I knew that me finishing that bucket was going to be a difference between winning or losing. So I just pushed through it and made it. You guys won a regular season division title, and then you were ousted in the quarterfinals of the Archdiocese. How did that loss fuel this run? Um, it definitely was a big push in the run we made because simply a lot of people counted us out after that loss. You know, um, Ohio is a very good team, but a lot of people felt like we were going to win that game, and unfortunately we ended up losing. But I think it kind of gave us the push or kind of the drive to know that anybody can be beaten any day. And we took that with us and we kind of just moved forward with it. And through our run, we always speak about how we come through a lot of adversity and that losing that game was one of the adversities we came through. One of two seniors in the regular rotation, you went through personal adversity this year. 
your journey this season to get back on the floor and be such a key contributor? How do you sum it up? Well, um, during midseason, uh, I had to just trouble at home, things like that. Um, I got hurt my thumb real bad, and I wasn't able to play for the for a couple games, about nine, ten games. In those ten games, you know, I was I was pretty down. You know, I was pretty pretty low. I'm um, just being home, not being able to be with my team. You know, do do what I love to do. And um, when I got back, I knew that it was no time to waste. And I just kind of jumped right back into things. And you know, I feel like this whole win, everyone here, and the people we present present is kind of just kind of fuels me, and it kind of made me feel like it was my turn to you know come back and make a difference. So that was just my mindset. I said when I come back on this court, there's no time to play games, and that's why we're here now. Everybody knows about the historic nature of Cardinal Hayes basketball. You walk into the gym, you see a banner of 1990. Everybody knows about the stories of Jamal Mashburn. But this 2017 team, they're putting a banner up in the gym. How does that sound? Um, um, excuse me. Um, right before the game, Lowe's kind of told us that to look up at the banner. And we looked at it, and we all kind of don't like the banner because it's been there for too long and it picked up dust. and. We didn't win one in about 27 years, so you know I think this one was important for the basketball program as well as the school in a whole. And I just, I'm just happy that you know we were able to bring it home. Just this team, you know, we don't have a match burn or we don't have an NBA player or anyone that's you know the greatest ever play in the city, anything like that. But we got a bunch of kids who work hard and we work hard to the point where we got this now. So I feel like you know the names or the plays you have, you know, we just play two of the best players in our you know in our city, and we beat them because you know we play harder and we're stronger and we just we got heart. And that's something that, you know, we just carry at Cardinal Hayes High School. I guess that 1990 banner has some company now, huh? Just a little bit. Congratulations, Mike. Thank you so much. One thing, can I shout somebody out? Go for it. All right, there's a couple of y'all I want to say thank you to. Um, Joe Lodes, my head coach. Uh, I want to say this to my mom, my man right here, Richard Rubio. Uh, he works me out in the gym. And I'm just, I'm just really happy to be here. Thank you for everybody. Thank you. It takes a village. Thank Congratulations. You. Thank you. A thoughtful and emotional Mark Jackson following a two-point victory over Malloy. Cardinal Hayes capturing its fifth title in school history, third at the AA level, and it ends a 27-year championship drought at the highest level in the CHSAA. 64-62, Hayes over Malloy. For our producer, Thomas Schnars, I'm David Resnick. Thanks so much for joining us on News 12 Varsity Game Time.